and welcome to the Coach Caitlin Show. I am Coach Caitlin and I am your host. I'm so happy that you have tuned in today. No, I don't always sit around in a tiara, but I'm going to explain that to you in just a moment. But before I go on, I want to first of all, just thank you for coming into my living room, my office and having a cup of tea with me that got my K-cup here. Not like a Keurig, but a K-cup. And I'm so excited to connect with you today. For those of you who don't know, The Coach Caitlin Show exists for your future. I invented this show, started this show, so that you could be thriving in the areas of life, love, and leadership. Now, a lot of people say, what is a coach? That's coach with a K. What is a coach? So we know what a sports coach is. We know, I mean, for people like me, I don't know what they do necessarily, but I know they help the players. But what a coach does, a life coach, I, I saw this definition the other day and I just had to write it down. A life coach is a passionate, dedicated individual who is here to unlock your potential and maximize your performance by believing, encouraging, and developing you. Basically, I am here for your future to help you pull out your potential and thrive. And that's what this show is for. Sometimes you're gonna see me up here like I am now, not always in a crown, but with my cup of tea or coffee to talk to you about a topic that is going to improve either your areas of life, love and leadership, Sometimes I'll have guest co-hosts, um, but it's all different layout, but I'm so happy you tuned in today. If you missed any of the shows or this is your first time tuning in, I want you to make sure you go and subscribe to the Coach Caitlin YouTube channel. That's Coach with a K. And there you can find all the episodes. I want to stay connected with you on Instagram and Facebook. You can follow me at Coach Caitlin because I don't just want to add value to your life through this show, but I want to add value to your life throughout the week. And so if you will go to CoachCaitlin.com forward slash the show coachcaitlin.com forward slash the show you can find ways to stay connected on social media youtube facebook instagram you can find a place to leave your testimony if today's show really impacts you i'd love to hear and have the opportunity to share stories of hope that you have gotten from this show you can find resources. I've written two books, one book called Slay and Pray, a 30-day devotional for women, 15 days, how to slay the enemy, 15 days, how to pray, and then Habits Not Hopes. After 10,000 hours of studying the most successful people, this book, I've narrowed, narrowed down the 10 essential daily habits to succeed in your life. And then you can find out how I can come to your church to speak on a Sunday morning, a women's conference, or a youth event. So thank you for tuning in to the Coach Caitlin Show show and today I'm going to be your guide coach Caitlin so why do I have a crown on my head <laughs> why did I come did I just wake up did I wake up like this if you've ever heard that term no I didn't wake up like this it took a while to get this makeup on and so growing up since we're getting to know each other over a cup of coffee growing up I was involved in pageants I've been involved in pageantry for over 15 years and I love competing. And in 2019, I was privileged with the opportunity to be Mrs. Georgia USA. And I got to represent Georgia in the USA pageant. And it's just been such an honor to be Mrs. Georgia USA, a former, I guess. Um, but I got to keep the crown. So a lot of people ask me that. Yes, I did get to keep the crown. But one of my favorite things truly was getting the opportunity to represent my title and to use the power of being what we called a reigning queen to impact my community. And, and it really gave me confidence. Even now, I'm feeling like the most um, in this crown and I love it. But I believe that I'm not only supposed to wear a crown, but I believe that every lady deserves to wear the crown that God's given to you and that is as a daughter of the king and so if you're a guy watching this today please stay tuned in i would love to talk to you about this but today's episode is really going to be focused on my girls because i believe on my ladies because i believe that we were all meant to wear a crown to represent our king our dad, if you are a Christian, if you're a believer, or if this is your first time hearing this, I pray that by the end of this show, you're going to say, I want to be a daughter of the king and ask the king into your heart. But I want to talk to you. What I believe that we weren't just made to exist in life. I believe that we as women were made to reign. We as women were made to reign. 
In the book of Esther, it talks about how she was born for such a time as this. If you've never heard about Esther, I encourage you to look her up. It's a very short book in the Bible, um, and, and you may not have a physical Bible. If you have a physical Bible, it's going to be in the Old Testament towards the front. But if you don't have a physical Bible, if you go download the Bible Gateway app for free, or if you just Google the book of Esther, it really does break down a beautiful story of a young lady who was orphaned, who was chosen through that process and became the queen. And she saved her people because she was appointed as queen for such a time as this. And I believe that there are women as women, we have to begin to rise up because we were created to be daughters of the king for such a time as this. Now, I know that, and I'm guilty of this myself, that we say, gosh, I wish I would have grown up in an easier time. This world is crazy. I wish I would have grown up in a time when all of this mess wasn't going on. But I believe if you're watching this, that I and you were born, that was like totally bad grammar, but I believe you and I were born for such a time as this. And then when we are raised up as queens for such a time as this, that means that we weren't just made to exist, we were made to thrive. And one of the things that I'm so passionate about, see John 10, 10 says that God has come to give us life and life more abundantly. God wants us to live an abundant life and to reign. In 1 Peter 2 and 9, it says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Can I tell you today, you may be sitting in a, a single bedroom apartment, not a furniture to your name. You may be sitting in the biggest mansion in this, in the city around the world. But can I tell you something? We all can have times of self-doubt women. We all can have times of where we don't feel like enough and no situation. You can be living in hell, whether it is on the streets or in a mansion. You can be experiencing hell, whether it's caused by some Money or it's something mentally you're facing, but that is not how we are supposed to live. The beginning of John 10, 10, it says, for the enemy comes to still kill and destroy, but God has come to give us life and life more abundantly. And ladies, what I have seen, as you can tell, I'm passionate about this. What I have seen is over and over, it said the enemy has a real target these days uh, on women attacking our identity, attacking who we are. And he's trying to steal, kill, and destroy our authority as daughters of the king to reign in this life, to take authority, to walk boldly. Hebrews 10 35 says, cast not away your confidence for it will be rewarded. I believe that there are many of us today that the enemy has tried to slam down our confidence through bullying, been there, through an eating disorder sort of been there through social media where we feel like so good about our life and our husbands or our friends. We feel so good about our job. And then somebody posts something and then you're just like, oh my gosh, my life sucks. Have you ever been there? Yeah, I just said sucks. Sorry, me mom. My grandmother's very conservative. Love you. But as we just feel like social media has just I feel like social media sometimes, which I love the tool it is, but sometimes it comes to still kill and destroy. It's used by the devil. But God has come to give us life and life more abundantly. And we were made to reign. You were made to reign. You know, now if you see um, Kate Middleton, De the Duchess of Cambridge, or Meghan Markle, they have a, well, before they roll on out, Meghan Markle and Harry, but still, they had authority in the kingdom. Why? Because they were daughters, they were heirs, or they married into the family of those who had authority in the land. They were royalty. And can I tell you, as a daughter of the king, you are royal. And I know sometimes we hear this and we're like, oh, that's good. That's fun. But this is like a legitimate thing. In the Bible, it says that we are heirs, joint heirs with Jesus. We are daughters of the king and we need to begin to walk in authority. Just like in the book of Joshua, it says, Everywhere your foot treads, I will give you as your territory. We need to begin to quit shrinking back and we need to begin to rise up and reign in this life, women. Yes, I'm talking to you. Yes, I'm talking to myself. We need to adjust. I want you right now, ladies, if you're watching, to adjust your crown. Yes, adjust your crown. Rise up and reign because your father is the king. How would you act in your job? How would you act in, in the different environments if you knew your father was the president, if your father was the king? Well, this whole earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That's what the Bible tells us. And you are a daughter of the king. Therefore, you were made to reign and walk in authority. 
You know, when I walk into my dad pastors a church and I know they say crazy stuff about PKs and some could be wild. I wasn't that wild, but I was bossy and authoritative when I went into their church and still to this day, even though my husband and I pastor a church when I know and when I know that I am at my father's church, my mom and dad's church, I walk in with authority and say, these lights need to do this. And this needs to do this and we need to clean this up and what's going on with that i mean they either love me or they hate me but the point is is that i know because that is my parents church that god's given them that i have authority in that building why because my parents are the pastors but why don't i walk in the same authority when i walk out on the streets and say you know why am i worried about this why am i stressed about this when i have authority to pray over this and authority to speak life over this so daughters of the king, I want you to adjust your crown right now and let me teach you how to reign in this life. Psalm 144, 12 says, our daughters with graceful beauty, royally fashioned as for a palace. Our daughters are graceful, full of beauty, royally fashioned as for a palace. You are royalty. I want you to put your hand on your chest and say, I'm royalty. Let me get a little hair flip in there and say, mm, I'm royalty. You are royalty. Why? Because your father is a king. And today we are going to learn how to reign. So if you have your notebook, if you have your fuzzy pen, if you have your notes on your phone, pop it on out, pop it on out and begin to take notes. I'm going to break it down. What does it mean to reign? R-E-I-G-N. R-G-I-N. R -I -G -N. R -I Lord help us all on my spelling. R-E-I-G-N. <laughs> yes, I did actually win the spelling bee, so I know that's shocking. But anyway, R-E-I-G-N. Rain. I'm going to let you get your notebooks out and take a moment to sip. Okay, so R. In order to reign and rise up and reign, ladies, and I'm very passionate about this because I see women all over being beat up. So but you need to understand so this is these are the five tools that i believe allow us to truly walk as the daughters of the king that we are to reign in this life and number one are realize who you are realize who you are you may have never heard this you may have been wanted by your parents you may have not been wanted by your parents you may have been an accident you may have been intentional you may have great family you may have a horrible family but one thing you need to know is you need to realize who you are and that is a daughter of the most high god that you were crafted by the hand of the creator of the universe it says in galatians 3:26, it says you all became true children of god you all became true children of God. I love what my husband said last night. He said, you are such a child of God that he has you as a screensaver on the back of his phone. <laughs> you are such a child of God that he has you as a screensaver on the back of his phone. God is proud of you. God loves you. You are a child of the most high God. You need to realize who you are. You know, I grew up in a really small town. Um, it's on the south side of Atlanta, and it was super small, and, and it was great. I love a good small town, so hey, shout out to all my small towners. It's awesome. I love a good small town, but, well, I said but, and then that makes, anyway, but one thing that you know about a small town, and those of you who live in small towns, you know what I'm talking about is that no matter where you go, you're always going to run into somebody who knows you and know who your mom and daddy are. You're always going to run into somebody who you know or somebody who knows your mom and daddy. And I, growing up, I went to the local high school, local middle school, and I knew that everybody in town knew me as Pastor Rick and Donna's daughter. And when I was there, I knew that there were certain things I could do and there were certain things I could not do. Why? Because of who my parents were. And, and like, you know, I remember 
trying to be like, oh, let me skip school today. I'm a senior. I'm so over this. And I was like, oh, goodness. If they catch Pastor Rick and Donna's daughter out, it's going to be just a big rumor. It's going to be a big problem in town. And I mean, not like a life-threatening problem, obviously. I wasn't that important that people in the town would be worried about it. But in the moment, I was just worried that my parents would find out because everybody knew who they are. I was a daughter of Rick and Donna Moncrief and still am. Can I tell you that you are a daughter of the Most High King? And when you are a daughter of somebody, you need to, when you realize who you are, there are certain things that you can do, the, a certain authority you have, and there are certain things you can't do. I realize who I am as a daughter of Rick and Donna Moncrief. I know that I could go into their home at any point and they would always have their home open to me. I know that I could go into their church and I could take authority, whether they want me to or not, take authority. This is what needs to happen. We need to do this. Why? Because I realize that I'm their daughter. As a daughter of the most high God, you need to adjust your crown and begin to walk into places of authority saying, I'm a daughter of the King. If I don't like this work environment, I can speak and pray over this work environment and see it change. If God has called me to do this, I need to realize who I am and that I can rise up in the call and the gift that God has for me. Why? Because I'm a daughter of the King. If I, I'm a daughter of the King, which means that any attack Satan comes against me, I can command that attack to go. I can pray against it. Why? Because I realize who I am and I'm a daughter of the King. So R, realize who you are. Who are you? You are a daughter of the King. Put your hand on uh, a hand on your chest and crown and say, I am a daughter of the King. Okay. R, realize who you are. E, embrace your beauty. You have to embrace your beauty. I love what Psalm 139, 14 says. It says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made by the hand of God. Can I tell you, I, we live in a world even worse. You know, I grew up and it was bad pressure then with magazines and different people at school. But man, social media gives us even more pressure to be a certain way. But you weren't supposed, you're not supposed to look like everybody else. You're not supposed to be the same size as everybody else. You are supposed to be you and you are fearfully and wonderfully made by the hand of God. You have to, in order to reign in this life, embrace your beauty. You know, growing up, I was overweight as a child and then I got bullied intensely, like crazy bullying. But in high school, I began to slim down just because I was getting taller. I was active in cheerleading and cross country. But I took it too far in ninth grade and began to have a very severe eating disorder that led me down a path to almost death. And I thank God that he saved me from it. But I didn't feel beautiful. Why? Because I defined myself by the standards of others versus the standards of God on my life. And I didn't embrace that I was a daughter of the King and fearfully and wonderfully made. I embraced that I had imperfections and I tried to destroy my life and my body because I didn't live up to what I felt like were the beauty standards of the world. Doesn't that make you think of John 10, 10 at the beginning when it says the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy? The enemy is trying to kill many, uh, tried to kill me and is trying to kill many women today because uh, through eating disorders, through having abuse on our body and feeling like we aren't good enough. Why? Because he wants to see us destroyed and lack confidence and not live the abundant life God has for us. But can I tell you that we have to begin to embrace your, our beauty in order to walk in full confidence and the abundant life God has for us. Queens walk confidently in who we are in the beauty God has for us. And, and this is something that we have to constantly remind ourselves of. Psalm 139, 14, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Can I tell you something, you know, in order to reign, this is a scripture I have to constantly pray over myself, speak over myself. A, a year ago, I had a baby boy and I thought that, you know, I'd be that mom who just snapped back, you know, snap back. And I've really had trouble. I posted on Facebook a while back, you know, a picture of me and my son and we were swimming and having a great time and my husband got a picture. But I remember looking at that picture and saying, oh my gosh, delete this. But something in me told me not to delete this because I hated how I looked. I, I was like, oh my gosh, so much fatter than I used to be. I hate how I look. And I just spent like 25 minutes tearing myself down. And my husband said, Caitlin, you were fearfully and wonderfully made. 
He's an awesome husband. And he also said, don't you want memories with Asher? Don't you want memories with your son? And I'm here to tell you that a lot of you, and I want to hear this because when I posted this, a lot of moms said this, mom watching this today, you need to just set it down and embrace your beauty and begin to take pictures with your children again. Don't get out of the picture because you feel unconfident in yourself. Embrace your beauty, adjust your crown and hop in those pictures because your kids are going to care that they have pictures with you when they're growing up. So we have to embrace our beauty, love who we are. So are Realize who you are. You're a daughter of the king. E, embrace your beauty. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I, identify your gifts. Identify your gifts. I love this version. I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. And I love how it states this. Ephesians 2 and 10. It says, we have become his poetry a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. I want to read this again because it's so powerful. Ephesians 2 and 10, we have become his poetry, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny, the good works we would do to fulfill it. God has good works for you to fulfill. He has an incredible destiny on your life, but we have to begin to identify those gifts. Now, some of you are watching this. Some of you girls, my fellow queens are watching this and you have been walking with your head down just ashamed that you can't walk in the gift God has for you. Can I tell you, it is time for you to rise up and reign. Identify your gifts and begin to use them for God. There are so many of you watching this today. I feel this in my heart right now. There are so many of you watching this today and you have gifts that you know. You have a beautiful voice to sing. You have a beautiful, um, you have a gift to speak and you have uh, designed clothes, a gift for business. You have all these gifts but you are allowing the lies of the enemy to say you aren't pretty enough, you aren't accepted enough, what will people think about me? What will my family say about me? And you're not doing the gift that God's called you to do, but we are his workmanship. There is a work that God has created for you to do, and he's given you gifts to do it so that you can do it now. You need to quit waiting on the approval of people and realize that you already have the approval of God and that you are a daughter of the king. And daughter is the, daughters of the king don't question the king. They walk confidently in their assignment. Why? Because they are are queens of the king. So you need to identify your gifts and don't be scared. <laughs> don't be scared. <laughs> I remember growing up, I used to be so scared to surrender my life to God because I was afraid that he was going to send me onto the mission field in Africa. Like I was convinced that if I surrender my life to God, he's going to throw me on the mission field in Africa and I'm going to have to live in a hut and I'm not going to get to have makeup and I'm not going to get to have dresses and pretty things. And I would be so fearful. I know this comes as a major shock to all of you, but me in a hut in the middle of the desert or the middle of the wilderness wouldn't do good. So I would just be fearful. And I talked to my dad one day and I was like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of scared. Like what if God calls me to be a missionary in Africa? And dad goes, do you, do you like, like going on missions? I was like, no, like I like being missions to America. I like reaching out to people in my community. Caitlin, do you have a gift to like build huts, to feed people? I mean, and so we went into this and my dad looked at me and he said something. He said, Caitlin, the gifts God's given you you like to speak, you like to communicate, you like to write. The gifts God's given you are aligned with the purpose God has for you. The gifts God's given you are aligned with the purpose God has for you. You don't have to be scared. He's gifted you so that you can go and do what he's called you to do and enjoy it. So I'm here to tell somebody, some queen, adjust your crown, embrace your gifts and walk in the calling he has for you. You don't have to be afraid. He's not going to call you to do something you don't like to do. So in order to reign, R, realize who you are. You're a daughter of the king. E, embrace your beauty. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. I, identify your gifts. You are a, 
God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for you to do. And G, grow in God. Grow in God. Matthew 6, says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. In order for us to reign, we have to grow to know our Father's voice. We have to grow to become. I love the statement that says, you know, God says he's going to prepare a place for you, but we have to be prepared for the place. Queens, we have to begin to grow rise up and begin to spend time every single day to fill up in God so that we go in the right place. It's kind of like uh, if, we, if we're not filled up, we can't go anywhere. We can't do what God's called us to do as his daughters and reign in life. It reminds me on our honeymoon, my husband and I got really low on gas and we were like in this long stretch of highway and we couldn't, I was like, oh my gosh, we're on empty. We're not going to make it to where we're supposed to go. And we saw a sign for like Bob's gas shack, but it was like still 28 miles down the road and I was just like God if we can just get to Bob's gas shack we are going to be able to conquer the rest of this trip and and sometimes we get to those desperate places where we feel so empty that we just all go to Bob's gas shack but can I tell you that as daughters of the king in order to live boldly and fearlessly and reign in this life and reign in this world in the day and age we're living in we have to grow in God and fuel up daily because he has something prepared for us but we have to be prepared for the place so R in order to reign we have to realize who you are you're a daughter of the king E you have to embrace your beauty you are fearfully and wonderfully made I, you need to identify your gifts. God, uh, Ephesians 2 and 10 says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for you to do. He's never going to call you to do something you don't enjoy to do. And G, grow in God. We have to fill ourselves up with God. That's where we have to read his word. We have to pray, fill ourselves up with God. Matthew 6, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things, the ability, the confidence to reign in this life as we're supposed to is going to come when we grow in God. And then last but not least, never settle for less. Never settle for less. Never settle for less in your job. Never settle for less in your relationships. Never settle for for less. God has something incredible for you. It's kind of like this story. Again, the enemy comes to still kill and destroy, but we have to adjust our crowns, rise up and reign because God has an incredible destiny on our life. Matthew 7, 11 says, if we being evil know how to give good things to our children, how much more does our heavenly father want to give us gifts? And it makes me think of the dad. A daughter was asking, I'm going to shorten this up really quick. A daughter was asking for a pearl necklace and she had worked and the dad said, if you'll give me that necklace, give me that necklace. And she wouldn't, it was a plastic necklace. She really loved it. But finally, when she surrendered the plastic pearl necklace to him, he gave her a real pearl necklace. Why? Because she didn't settle. So we need to reign together, realize who you are, embrace your beauty, identify your gifts, grow in God, never settle for less, adjust your crowns and reign queens because God has an incredible destiny and purpose for you. Let's stay connected, sisters. Go to coachcaitlin.com forward slash the show. I'll see you next time. Go out there and rain.